being uh, genetic causes, the way an individual uh, has been wired from day one, when the, people, the way people have been born. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are talking about the genetic part of us. Right. Uh, there are people that who have been born uh, and have been wired to be just the kind of people who just suffer from depression, right. meaning their, uh, their DNA composition has been by wired that way. Now, maybe there's nothing much we can do about it, right. but we say once we know that an individual like that, we can come up with preventive measures to make sure that that is not a situation that will make them over the rest of their lives right. and then we go to another reason where we say it could be biological right. meaning that um somewhere along the line um diseases this, this, this actually amounts to disease that uh, the brain diseases may be as a cause uh, or the cause of their uh, depression mm -hmm. and we say that um uh, that one can be treated, of course, right. uh, using medication and many other uh, 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 ways that are possible there out there. And then we go to the other way of say it's psychological, that there are some people who suffer from the depression out of psychological issues. Right. And this comes with things like the way we think, uh, the way we analyze situations may make us actually suffer from depression. We right. are different, mm -hmm. and our perception of situation is so different that for some people, the way they perceive situations, they perceive things, may actually lead them to depression. Right. And then we go to another bold part of it that we call environmental. Right. The environment itself is mm -hmm. enough to cause us depression. Right. I may not be depressed today, but I'm almost there because it's a bit hot outside. Okay. Even the heat that we experience mm -hmm. may actually <laughs> cause us depression, but okay. uh, not really. Uh -huh. uh, it's to a very minimal extent, but yet it's possible. All right. You just mentioned about diseases and I'm like, uh, recently we've had cases of cancer and uh, I'm imagining someone with cancer or maybe a family member affected by cancer patient, they could be depressed. Is this true? It is very true, Hilary, because um, this situation is actually both. It's like uh, two sides of a coin. One may lead to the other. Right. Now, a person who has uh, this uh, um, suffering from depression from all these causes that I've men mentioned right. may also be prone to, um, you know, getting these other diseases. So these other diseases may come in as a de as a because of depression, right. or depression may come in because of these other diseases. So okay. cancer being one of them, as you mentioned, or these others like diabetes. First of all, we say mostly chronic diseases. Right. Chronic diseases may cause depression, and the depression may also cause chronic diseases. Let's put it that way in simple terms, okay. meaning one may cause the other. All right. And uh, how often or how simple is it for depression to cause a disease? Uh, it is possible because, for example, when one suffers from depression, uh, this person uh, may have, for example, uh, these characteristics or behaviors that we say, for example, lack of sleep, what we call insomnia, or um, what we call sleep apnea, or what we call um, narcolepsy, where one would be just be sleeping here, there. Yeah. Uh, one may actually suffer from what we call either um, uh, too much appetite, meaning this person will be eating a lot. Now we know what comes from eating a lot. And when right. we talk about eating a lot, for somebody who suffers from depression, they don't care about their diet. Right. They just eat to fulfill that you know, the void, that particular yeah, part that is missing something. Uh -huh. So they may not care of their diet. Now, wh what happens when we don't care about our diet? We just eat to fill our stomach. Right. It means that nutritional value in our bodies will have deteriorated, meaning we may suffer either from malnutrition right. or we may suffer from obesity mm -hmm. or we may suffer from these all these other diseases that may come with um, improper balanced diet. So you can imagine, yes, it is possible. Oh, all right. I didn't know that. At least now I know. Now, um, how can you tell someone is dis depressed and, okay, that's a family friend or, a, or someone I know, how can I tell this person is de depressed and the individual, how can they tell they are depressed? Okay, maybe I can start with the first one where this is a person standing on the side and they want to know, uh, is my daughter, my mom, my dad, or you know, my uncle are depressed? Now, there are signs that we look at, mm -hmm. and they, are, they may sound actually very simple, 
uh, if we are always there to get to know the behaviors of this individual. Because the most important thing is, do we understand our people that well? Mm -hmm. uh, one of them could be uh, insomnia, as I started with. Right. It's very simple that this person has been doing so well, sleeping very well, but all of a sudden they're suffering from irritability, they don't get sleep. Some mm -hmm. of them will be sleeping too much. Meaning that you have this, for example, um, a grown up in the house, be it a mom, be it a dad. All of a sudden, waking up is a problem. They go to bed, for example, early, and even as they go to bed, they are looking very tired. So that, again, is another sign that something you know, persistent, you know, uh, a situation where they just fall tired, they just become tired mm -hmm. for no apparent reason that one can is able to identify. Then you say, this is a sign that something is not right. right. Then that sleeping is too much, where they be waking up very early during these other days, but all of a sudden, they just want to sleep. Uh, this other person, the, the uh, other area is, for example, the hygienic part of that of, of them, that they don't care so much about hygiene. So you realize um, when you, you before they used to take maybe shower, take care of the uh, grooming generally, but right now they don't care. They don't care to the wind. Mm -hmm. um, they just come in maybe outside like it's so you know dusty right now, but they come and just get to bed, and you're like something is not right with them. Right. Then again, the major one where we say this one cuts across board, and uh, at least we say one out of five people may go through this. Mm -hmm. It is the suicidal thoughts that some individuals may develop. So research is telling us that at least five, I mean one out of five individuals may actually have suicidal thoughts. Right. And um, some of them may actually not may not just be thought, but they may go ahead and try. And right. this is where now we say we really need to be uh, understandable. We really need to understand our people or the significant other, the people we live around with, be it at work, be it in our homes, because what when we understand, when something like this comes up, we don't just look at it like they're just doing it. Because you cannot just try to kill yourself for fun. True, true. You, you can't do that. Right. When you do that, we say normally it's a cry for help. Mm -hmm. This person is crying for help, and this is the only way they know of how to do it, of how to cry. Right. So basically, these are some of the things we look at. Some people will eat a lot, some people will not eat a lot. Some mm -hmm. will sleep a lot. Some will come f to be hyper vigilant. Mm -hmm. Some will have lost interest in the things that they used to do a lot, mm -hmm. some will isolate themselves from the rest of the public, then you say something is not right. And those are some of the things we need to look at. All right, we'll be getting to how do you now help someone who is crying for help. Keep it Y254 Health Wednesday takes a break here on Y254. When we come back, we look more into that. Stay tuned. Y254, imagine. huko ja nje kuna uko kali kila mtu anasema mara anaimba kama monaise mwingine wili po wengine alikiba kwa hiyo kila mtu anaongea na diamond kuona po exclusive entertainment join me for limbo ko anni filin adisa on karaoke live Maybe share, but take it all in me. Won't you share me? You are cold. Come on, see what to share me. I, I, you're yeah, chilly. Hey, yeah. Mother, you see. Yes. Oh, to me, more gaunga. Wana usema usema mbinu ufuata mwendo na basi runinga ya Y254 tunafuata mkondo huo kwa kisha tunalea vipaji na kupa burudani kupitia vipindi vya mziki, majadiliano na elimu pia tunangazia masuala burudani na kukupa exclusive kutoka kwa mastaa wapendao Heyo mambo pipi this is Alicia Selichi Kwa 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 k
下。Fresh. Fresh. Y two five four. Imagine. Many thanks for keeping us company. This is Y254 Health Wednesday. I'm Dereva Hilary and uh, I'm speaking to Zakia Rashid, a psychologist. We are talking about depression, which is a uh, mental health. And now, uh, before we took that break, we had addressed uh, major factors and we looked into how do you tell someone is depressed. And now we want to see this person who tries uh, suicide, they are crying for help. How do I help this person now? Okay, first of all, um, after understanding this, uh, this person, we cannot just be there in the house and say that for sure, we are so sure that this person is depressed. We need to also go for medical intervention because the doctor has to really assess this person and be able to tell right. that this person is going through depression. Now, when that one has been established, then uh, first thing that will happen is the doctor will have to uh, work out that. Like, what are the modalities that are going to be there to help this person? Right. Is it medical intervention? Where this person has to get treatment and uh, this treatment will depend on uh, the severity of that depression uh, meaning this person can be given antidepressants uh, to be able to work that situation, uh, situation out and these are not the drugs that are given just once this person will be on medication for quite some time right. now apart from that again that's where we say we need to as counselors we come in and say we need also to come up with a, a, a a therapy right. where we help this individual uh, uh, you know try to shape up his or her life in uh, a manner that you know you know uh, we say that even as this person is using medication they also need to understand the whole that they are cognitively and um, psychologically so when therapists come in or as counselors they are there to establish their psychological part of you know their well-being are they how are they thinking and here we can introduce now what you call cognitive behavior therapy Right. where we help them you know uh, uh, um, deal with their irrational thoughts maybe there are situations that are happening in life that are causing them thinking to think the way they think some of them will be loss of a job loss of a job can even cause someone depression because sure. you can imagine if this person is a breadwinner mm -hmm. even when they are not breadwinners somebody will want to have a good life earn something and have a good life so that is it, itself is enough to make somebody you know you know get got into depression if they are trying to look for a job they can't get right. so when we bring them for their session we want to tell them that um you may not have a job, but um, depending on what kind of a job you want or the kind of a job you want, do you want to be employed? Can you come up with something it's better? You know, even if you want to be employed, if you can't be employed, is that the end of it? Can you maybe try to employ yourself? You know, that is self-employment. What is it that you are good at? What is it that you can do? So yeah. that way we are helping them to able to deal with their irrational thoughts of what they think that without a job I can't live. And that way they are able to grow and go past those irrational thoughts. So therapy does really work for them. Medication does really work. And these two have to be, they have to go hand in hand. We cannot just have one and deal because when it goes to clinical depression, right. then these people have to get into treatment. All right. Uh, now with a uh, it showed, it showed that uh, the, the review or the data showed that men are most affected compared to women. And now we know naturally men are introverts. They just don't speak. Now for a man, because they are had, had shells, how do you tell this man needs help? Because they won't speak. Uh, for that case, we are looking at the clues, what we had just mentioned, because this person will not talk to us and tell us, I'm going through one, two, three. But then being a member of your family, for example, you are able to tell when this person has changed, you know, the, the way they've, they've been living. Mm -hmm. And that is enough to tell because this change happens gradually. So today you realize that this person does not care about his hygiene. This person maybe eats too much or does not care what this what he or she eats, especially now this is a he, it's mm -hmm. a man. Or this person comes and they'll always say they're very tired and want to go to bed. Mm -hmm. This person maybe used to have friends, but all of a sudden this person does not care about friends. Mm -hmm. This person has been, uh, hasn't been drinking or has been drinking 
very little, but now they've really plunged into alcohol mm -hmm. and they are taking that or even other substances because they, it can be alcohol. Some people will even resort into other substances. Then we see these are some of the things that we really need to look at. And they are so obvious. Right. If they are very obvious. By the way, if you really understand your person, mm -hmm. then you can really tell when the changes, these changes appear. You can right. easily and say this is not normal mm -hmm. and they need help. Now, do we have stingy, stages of uh, depression? Uh, we say that we have, we do really have them because um, depression. What is depression? It depression actually starts with stress. This is chronic stress. Right. So it all starts with acute stress, where um, somebody is saying, you know, we normally like saying out there. I'm having stress. Oh, I'm stressed out because I didn't take tea in the morning and you start wondering tea and tea stress. And <laughs> Where does that come from? <laughs> Where does that come from? <laughs> but we are wired differently. What I think is, 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 is trash, it's your treasure. What you think is treasure is my trash. True. So we do not, uh, we should not sit there and overlook this uh, mm -hmm. cause that we hear mm -hmm. and say because this person is just saying they are stressed out, mm -hmm. then we just say, ah, he kawaida. No, mm -hmm. we look at that and say, for how long have, we, have you been stressed out? Because mm -hmm. this acute stress will eventually move to chronic stress mm -hmm. and when now it moves to chronic stress that's now we start seeing the situation now changing drastically meaning all these um, uh, 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 situations that we are talking about mm -hmm. are starting now to come out all during right. acute stress we hardly see changes mm -hmm. so we just see somebody talking and laughing about it and we think this is normal but no so from acute stress mm -hmm. now we go to chronic stress now we go to this depression mm -hmm. and now this depression because chronic stress is already depression but now we move now from this depression to major depression what we call clinical depression so these are the stages that we follow and say if we get to understand from day one right. then it may we may not go to our individuals may not go to major depression all right uh, those are the stages now we have seen people com commit suicide because of depression other than committing suicide which other other areas or what else uh, can we see now this one is a serious due to depression as in the scenario which is the worst scenario Okay, we say that the worst case scenario could be uh, somebody. Uh, okay, all these things that we've mentioned are very serious. Mm -hmm. If you have an individual in the house who does not sleep mm -hmm. because they are stressed out mm -hmm. or crying mm -hmm. because they're stressed out, a little bit of talk and they're just there crying, or a little bit of a situation they cry, then you just realize, you can imagine a grown-up crying. Then mm -hmm. you start wondering, what is going on with you? Mm -hmm. Then you know that this is not normal, this is a depression. Right. Then when an individual plunges into drug and substance abuse, then this is a serious situation. And to say, uh, this is a call for help, there's something wrong with this person, and mostly mm -hmm. depression. When an individual has decided to isolate himself, of course, it's it's, it's, it's not conscious. Mm -hmm. It is unconscious that an individual just pulls away from the crowd, pulls mm -hmm. away from members of the family, pulls away from friends. Mm -hmm. um, then we say, this is serious. When an individual used to like doing this particular activity, and all of a sudden, they draw away from this particular activity of choice, Mm -hmm. then we say this is serious when people now start absconding work they are not going to work and and we've seen that a lot that all of a sudden an individual just decide i'm not going to work they've not decided mm -hmm. something is wrong with them and in mostly it is depression so ours just look at what is causing this depression but these are the signs that are so obvious mm -hmm. especially not going to work not participating in activities of choice mm -hmm. um in, uh, finding an individual now involving himself in drug and substance abuse mm -hmm. then these are some of the things we look at oh you just say someone uh, withdrawing from other people and we have seen uh, young people majorly they they withdraw from others and they sink to, your, to their phones and to an extent even the phones have resorted to depression. Now would you say social media for that case ha would cause depression and if it does, why do we find young people, most of them, uh, withdrawing from others and going to their phones? Okay, social media. Yes, unfortunately, I'm seated here. <laughs> this is social media. Because mm -hmm. there's a positive and uh, negative side of everything. Sure. So we cannot say that social media is bad. Mm -hmm. But what we are looking at is basically, especially the youngsters, mm -hmm. what are they looking for in, in these gadgets, these you know electric devices? Right. And when do they get depression because of them? Mm -hmm. They are getting depressed, especially uh, with these days we have Facebook, we have Twitter, we have WhatsApp, mm -hmm. especially uh, Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, 
people post photos there and they want to see feedback from from others from the uh, these are the people you don't even know but mm -hmm. you still consider them very important people in your life mm -hmm. so when people do not get feedback from what they post they, they really feel bad so mm -hmm. they start feeling bad and they start analyzing themselves is there something wrong with me mm -hmm. that's why i'm not getting feedback maybe before they used to get and then all of a sudden mm -hmm. the trend is you know changing mm -hmm. what is happening with me and it's enough to keep them away right. then again the very same gadgets what kind of a gadget do you have and what kind of a gadget do i have right. you have a slick phone i have my milika mm -hmm. that is already depression setting in True. because now i go talk to my parents maybe they not that they don't want to buy mm -hmm. but they feel like maybe they, don't, they cannot afford True. yet i don't understand because uh, most of the time the youth the teenagers don't understand mm -hmm. and it's not because they don't want to it's mm -hmm. because they are they've been born at this time when everyone is having everything mm -hmm. so they feel like if my parents cannot provide there's something wrong with them not with me mm -hmm. something wrong with them because they need to give me whatever i want i need to get sure. i have to get mm -hmm. so that assumption that i have to get so what is being posted there what the feedback that we get from public mm -hmm. it's really affects especially the youth because they really care they are in this um a stage where the peers matter most true more than even the parents more even the more than the, the, the relatives mm -hmm. so for them the public Public um, uh, uh, response is much more important than what you get in the house. Right. So that one for them is something that is so very important, mm -hmm. and the response will actually determine whether they are acting the way they're supposed to be or mm -hmm. they get it because once they not get depressed, but once, twice, thrice, and mm -hmm. they are not getting what they want, the feedback that they want, mm -hmm. they posted, or they may actually get feedback, but it's negative. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody has given a very bad comment on social About media. Them, yes. That one is enough to depress someone because it can depress even you. Mm -hmm. It means. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe if I've done it once. So right. you can imagine these people are always there. Mm -hmm. And you see even breakups, you know, relationships, things are happening in social media. People just want to air everything yes. in social media. So the feedback, and I keep on telling, especially um, the youth, when I talk to them, I tell mm -hmm. them, you do not just go and air everything there. Because mm -hmm. no, these people don't know you. They can say anything. True. And they have no apologies to make because, after all, they don't know you. And they are entitled to their opinion. They are entitled to their opinion. True. So just as you are entitled to your opinion and to do whatever you think you are, you can do, right. so are they. So when you get negative feedback, don't start falling sick and don't look at it like, um, mm -hmm. why did this person say to me? You did not tell them that you are posting something. Though they, they had liberty to do whatever they want. True. So if you didn't care about posting, don't care about the feedback that you get. It's as simple as that. Move on with your life. All right. You get negative feedback, suck it up and move on. <laughs> you get positive feedback. Mm -hmm. Don't, you know, you, you, you know, cause a lot of jubilation because yeah, you right. never know when you, to, you, 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 you come back to haunt you. Right. So take it as it is. But try to minimize. We tell the youth, try to minimize on what you post, right. what the, you know, the comments that you give. Don't air all, you know, all the dirty laundry there because what goes around will always come around and right. it will get hit you really bad. Uh, speaking of social media now, uh, let's talk about uh, socially uh, in terms of relationships. Uh, your partner doesn't understand you and now it could lead to a breakup and now because of this you are depressed now how do you help such a person because they have been depressed because of someone not something oh exactly in most cases we say in fact depression may come from you know the very same people that we really care about right. and it's possible it's normal mm -hmm. so we cannot say that we're expecting just things to happen to us because they've been caused by something mm -hmm. but someone in fact more than often mm -hmm. uh we may actually be depressed because of especially relationships right. relationships as a because we have inter and intrapersonal relationship we have relationship with ourselves mm -hmm. how much do we hold of that right yeah how much do we want to relate with ourselves mm -hmm. that one is either even enough to cause us anxiety mm -hmm. and anxiety may this anxiety may lead to depression yeah. Right. Because how we perceive ourselves, uh, the way we've been, why the way we've been made, mm -hmm. um, our, our our body, ideal body that we want, the way we want to look, that is between us. No one is judging us. That is interpersonal, intrapersonal relationship. Sure. So how do we deal with that? It's even enough to cause us a lot of depression. Mm -hmm. So when we go again to interpersonal relationships, we are talking about us, me, and someone else. Mm -hmm. It is possible. And when it comes to relationship issues, mm -hmm. it's not easy. Because sure. once you start a relationship, whichever, because we are not just talking about a relationship about boy, girl, or, you know, marriage relationship. We are talking about that kind of interaction. It could be a liking. It could just be friendship. But when it breaks, right. then it causes a lot of anxiety in this individual. Because mm -hmm. when that relationship was forming, there was a bond that mm -hmm. was forming. Yeah. And now imagine we are breaking this bond. This relationship was not formed overnight. 
it True. took time to, to be formed. Mm -hmm. So uh, it will again take a lot of time. When it breaks, it takes, and you know most of the time relationships break that just pop, uh, somebody <laughs> just, and, and again we go back One to morning the media, they change their mind. <laughs> and, and the social media and whatever, the phone, somebody just send you a message, it's over. No, like, and you're like, what? It's how? Over, like, how? How now? How is it <laughs> over? And they just say, you, and sometimes they don't even respond. Mm -hmm. They just tell you it's over, switch mm -hmm. off their phone, or even block you. Right. That is where now mm -hmm. problem starts. Mm -hmm. So we say that, yes, it can cause um, a lot of um, anxiety mm -hmm. and a lot of fears, and all these things put together, they may lead to depression. Now, when we help, how do we help? Mm -hmm. We help this individual by making them understand. Right. that um, relationships are not permanent. Mm -hmm. If somebody is to come to me as a counselor and say, okay, this is a, what has happened. First of all, I start by saying relationships are not permanent. Right. This, uh, you form a relationship with a different person and um, this person, was, for some, you are not even related. Maybe they're just friends. From an even different background. Different background. Mm -hmm. So you do not expect that this relationship, it's a must that it has to last sure. forever. Mm -hmm. So that expect expectation that relationship do not last, if at all a person will have it from day one. Mm -hmm. It will not cause a lot of trouble when this relationship breaks. But sure. sometimes we will move into relationship with a lot of expectation and we are so sure mm -hmm. that this is it. This will last. Mm -hmm. So when you are there and with that mindset, when it breaks, it mm -hmm. becomes a problem because it's hard to deal with that negative part of it. So mm -hmm. we let people understand that relationships are there. They'll mm -hmm. always be there. They are not permanent. Mm -hmm. And when it does happen, mm -hmm. then give yourself time to digest all that has happened. Mm -hmm. Get to know what is it that you benefit benefited from that relationship that you can take into another mm -hmm. what have you learned what are the lessons that you've learned before you move into another relationship so mm -hmm. that whatever happened to this one does right. not happen to the next one all, all right now i want us to conclude giving your recommendations now kenya is ranked as sixth in africa in suicide uh, cases and uh, who these uh ali these expressed concerns with kenyan uh hospitals how they treat these people with mental problems uh, because they say uh, the legislature that is there dates back to 1989 now how do you think as a nation we can pull it back and help our people without mistreating them because they have mental problems as we wind up Thank you, Hilary. Uh, that one is very important. And I would say that it's so unfortunate mm -hmm. that even the people we entrust our lives with, mm -hmm. uh, who we expect to have understood the whole thing about depression, do sure. not, mm -hmm. or they just don't want to understand mm -hmm. because things have changed uh, we are not living in yester years where um, we were running our lives in a very different way well, you know the for example the social media wasn't there right. um, electrical devices weren't there things have changed mm -hmm. and we've moved on you call ourselves millennials some of these people you know the dot coms and all these things mm -hmm. so these things have come with its baggage meaning the way we've been treating individuals then mm -hmm. is not the same as the way we should individual <coughs> we should understand that first of all what is really causing these this depression mm -hmm. or mental illness because we, depression is mental illness when we understand the causes right. we are really able to deal with either the prevention mm -hmm. or treatment right. and me I keep on saying we should not just start with treatment right. we start with prevention mm -hmm. before we go to treatment right. meaning if we understand the causes of depression mm -hmm. then we can start by psychoeducating the community on how to prevent right. where you don't get a job let it not stress you where you don't have a job you can actually do extracurricular activities to go volunteer mm -hmm. you know do something that is so productive even right. if it does not give yeah. you a penny and you'll still enjoy go do what you enjoy exercise mm -hmm. eat well and right. eat well meaning eat balanced diet don't start until you fall sick then you start now placing your meals in you know cards where you say today i'll eat this it's already too late right. so we say that the mm -hmm. medics and uh, the people in the hospital, these are the medics, they are the very same people who should psychoeducate all those who are coming there mm. to make them understand that this is a disease. And the way they treat them, treat them should be, very, should, 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 should be you, know, you, know, you know, put in a different angle right. that for them to understand mm. that this is a disease. They even need to talk to, this, to their clients that this is not normal this is a All disease right. and yeah we, we well. <laughs> unfortunately we are out of time many thanks for coming and uh, sharing t and speaking to us about depression and <laughs> how we can go about it uh, she has been my guest as uh, zakia rashid a counselor i'm hoping back home you have learned something mm -hmm. uh thank you so much for keeping us company my name is dereva hillary see you on friday goodbye